let's resume uh, our discussion. And uh, today, as promised, we are going to discuss uh, matching. But before discussing matching, let me let me finish uh, very very briefly uh, the, the the discussion that we had about constructing effective field theories. So we we saw that. Uh, the, the goal of, a, of an effective field theory is that of reproducing the same physics as the, the full theory in a specific uh, domain range of energies or parameters. Okay. And how do you construct this theory? Well, you focus on, uh, on uh, describing the relevant uh, uh, states, physical states. You choose your uh, degrees of freedom, so the variables, the fields that you you, you you have to use, uh, you, you can utilize to, to build the Lagrangian. And, uh, and then, uh, as we will see now, you will have to uh, have a procedure which allows you to, to fix the coefficients of these effective operators, okay? So we say that the Lagrangian for an effective field theory consists, apart from a term which is uh, leading, okay, consists of a, of a series of local operators. Now, I wanted to uh, highlight, uh, make a summary of this discussion and highlight two properties of, of, uh, of this formulation of an effective field theory. The first, okay, is a, is, a, is a very simple observation that the effective field theory itself is a, is a, is a full-fledged quantum field theory. Okay, so it is not uh, a theory which uh, st uh, stays on a different footing with respect to uh, the full theory, except for one uh, obvious uh, uh, limitation, which is uh, <laughs> supposed to reproduce the, the correct physics only in a certain range of, uh, of energies, or if you want, in, in this case of energies, okay, in our specific case of effective quantum uh, field theories, effective quantum field theories. But apart from that, it's a, it's a full-fledged quantum field theory, which means that it can be used, uh, as you know, I mean, uh, as, as, a, as, a, as a complete, complete theory, uh, and in particular, can be used at any loop order. Okay? You can use it at three level, but you can use it also at loop, uh, loop level. And of course, uh, as any quantum field theory, it will uh, require some regularization and some renormalization. Okay, and um, but uh, apart from a from a practical, if you want, technical difference with the renormalizable so-called renormalizable theories, uh, no renormalizable field theories uh, are renormalized in the same way, despite their names. The, their name. Uh, how do you do? Well, you first of all you regularize, okay, uh, in such a way that any divergence is uh, scattered cut off at some, in, some, uh, in some way. And then you introduce counting terms to cancel the, uh, the divergences that you obtain by removing the cutoff, okay? Now, in a renormalizable uh, field theory, as you know, there is an, a finite number of, of uh, counting terms that you need to insert. Here, instead, the fact that you have these, uh, these uh, additional non-renormalizable operators, okay, in fact, uh, this, this name, non renormalizable, is, is actually not a good name. We should call them uh, higher dimensional because they, they, they have dimension larger than four. The presence of these uh, higher dimensional operators implies that, uh, uh, in principle, if you want to renormalize completely your theory, you need an infinite number of counting terms. Uh, and by the way, uh, this happens if you here you consider an infinite number of effective operators. In practice, you, you will not need an infinite number of, of operators and counting terms. You, we say that you can truncate these, uh, these series, keeping only the operators which give you the leading, uh, uh, well, the leading, the, the, the corrections at the order uh, that, you that you need, okay? So you have a certain precision, uh, uh, you want to get a certain precision, and then uh, you keep only a certain number of operators. At the same time, in the same way, if once you have to renormalize the theory, you can uh, you can introduce a certain number of counting terms, 
which eventually will be <laughs> of the same, uh, will have exactly the same form. No? The, the counting terms are nothing else uh, operators in the, in the original Lagrangian. So even here, since you, uh, you are truncating the series of operators at a certain point, you can also truncate the series of, of counting terms. So eventually, if you want to make predictions of observables, okay, uh, these predictions uh, can be done by considering a finite number of counting terms. So in this, in this, uh, in, if you formulate the, 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 the problem in this way, you see that there is really no difference with respect to uh, a renormalizable field theory. There is, however, a difference, as I was saying, is that the fact that these uh, operators imply uh, uh, coupling strengths, so in interactions, which are growing with the energy. And it's, uh, if you want, is the other side of, uh, of, of the coin <laughs> of, of, uh, of noticing of, of, of this fact, of the fact that if these operators give a correction to observables, for example, a scattering amplitude, uh, on-shell scattering amplitude, which goes like energy divided by uh, some cutoff scale, some mass, heavy mass, to the dimensionality of the operator minus four, okay, so if you want, this is the shift due to the nth operator, okay. So we say that uh, if E, the energy, uh, becomes very small compared to M, this effect is a, is a, is a, is a, is a small one, it's a perturbation, and, high, and higher dimensional operators give even a, a smaller contribution, so we can truncate. But now take the other, you know, the opposite perspective. If you, if you now go to high energies, then eventually all these effects grow. And uh, if you reach energies of order M, then everything will become of order one. And eventually even, uh, you can even think of going to energies larger than M if you just consider this theory as a, a st standalone theory. Okay, so you see that eventually this interaction will, uh, the, the interactions uh, generated by these operators will blow up. During the discussion, we made uh, one example, which is uh, the one where you have uh, one where you have this effective operator obtained uh, in, in the process that we, we considered last time, integrating out the loop of, of having vector-like uh, fermions. This operator in, induces a constant interaction between two Higgses and, and two gluons, which uh, you see this constant interaction involves, involves derivatives. Okay, so it's case like uh, energy square divided by the mass of the heavy fermions that you integrated out square times. Well, there was a uh, Yukawa coupling because C CG was going as alpha strong divided by four pi times y squared divided by m squared, okay? And in fact times, uh, let's keep also this factor alpha strong divided by four pi. So this thing here, this factor can be seen as, a, as a coupling, an effective coupling strength squared, okay? Which is, which is however now a function of the energy. So the, the, the larger is the energy, okay? And the stronger, will uh, gluons and, and Higgs bosons interact. But you see that eventually this, uh, this coupling strength is only a, a good description of the, the full theory uh, at low energies. While if you, if you go to energies which are, which are uh, too large, the effective field theory will give a description which is, uh, which is certainly not the one uh, matching the, the UV theory, and in fact, uh, uh, its couplings will, uh, will blow up, okay? So the difference uh, with a norm normalizable theory with respect to a, a, a normalizable one is that certainly the non-normalizable theory, okay, uh, has interactions which uh, a certain point blow up. While the, the normalizable theory may, may be, uh, 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 it may be uh, such that you can extrapolate it to arbitrarily high energies. Okay, but there you have to see the evolution of the couplings uh, uh, in, in, the, in the theory. So it might not be, uh, be possible to extrapolate the theory, but certainly in an effective field theory, there is some coupling which uh, will, uh, will blow up at high energies. So 
the fact that the, the fatty field theory is a, is a, is a full-fledged quantum field theory uh, is also reflected in, in, in the fact that when you do calculations of loops, for example, suppose you want to compute a loop of this diagram where you, uh, you insert this opera effective operator once, okay, and then you have uh, a quartic interaction of Higgs's. That's a, a next leading order correction to this uh, process, okay, uh, arising at order lambda four, okay, divided by 16 pi square. Now, how do you do this calculation on this loop? Well, in the usual way. So you, you, you write your integral and you are not restricting the, the, the virtual momenta circulating here in any way. Okay, so there will be divergences, and, uh, and these divergences will be uh, absorbed by Compton terms as I was discussing. Obviously, the fact that the UV behavior of the effective theory differs uh, from, uh, from the one of the, the, of the full theory, uh, well, th th this fact might, might, uh, might uh, raise some, some doubts on, on whether <laughs> this process is, uh, is to be included in, a, or, or, or rather the, the, the loop integral should be cut, for, a, for example, at energies of order capital M. Uh, fortunately, eventually, uh, the high energy part of the integral is, uh, is exactly a part in which the, the momenta circulated in, in the loop uh, are, are very large, and this means that the effect, the result, is local again. So it is true that the effective theory, okay, the contribution from the high energy uh, uh, part of the loop in the effective theory is not uh, reproducing the correct result of the UV theory. But that part is, uh, is again local. Okay, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, uh, a contribution to the total, uh, total result of this, uh, of this diagram, which is again local. Okay, and that can be somehow adjusted uh, by choosing these, uh, these, uh, these coefficients. Okay, and that's exactly what you do effectively in the procedure of matching. So to summarize, the, the effective theory okay, is a full-fledged quantum field theory. Okay? You can do calculations exactly as you do for a normal theory. The UV behavior uh, is... Um, is, is, uh, is not the right one, okay? Is not the one uh, uh, reproducing the correct physics. However, however, uh, that energy domain, okay, is, uh, is uh, equivalent to local effects, and these local effects eventually can be uh, changed by changing the, the, the values of the coefficients. In the, in the full theory, of course, what happens when you reach energies of order capital M or above is that the full nonlinearities due to this change of the, of the, of the heavy modes uh, are uh, curing the, the energy behavior of the, of the theory. Okay, so it, 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 the, the coupling strengths in the full theory will not grow uh, as uh, they do in the effective theory. Okay, so that's the difference between the full theory and the effective theory. So the effective theory has this limitation, uh, can be used uh, sensibly only below a certain energy threshold, but calculations are done without restricting the integral, uh, the, the, the momenta in, in the integrals, in the loop integrals. So this has to be compared and contrasted with another approach, to, uh, another way to construct effective field theories, which is the one proposed by Wilson. Uh, and, uh, excuse me, there is uh, one question. Please. Oh, hi, thank you. Um, are effective field theories always free normalizable in the low energy limit? Sorry, can you say it again? Oh, sure thing. Um, are effective field theories always free normalizable in the low energy limit? Yes, so uh, despite their name, uh, normalizab normalizability boils down to what? To sacrificing no, a certain number of, of observables, of inputs, right? Of, of experimental uh, inputs to fix the, the, the coefficients of your Lagrangian. Even here, no, if, if you think of this uh, leading term as a, as a normalizable part, even here there will be coefficients that you don't know. 
know, couplings, masses. So th these quantities you will have to fix by uh, experiments. Okay? And in the same way, at, at each of these terms will have a counting term. Okay? So that's why you need to sacrifice something no, uh, to fix these values and, and, and reabsorb the infinities okay, in uh, using the experimental input. The same thing also happens here, okay? So the only difference is that for an effective field theory, in principle, you have an infinite number of operators, okay? And an infinite number of counting terms. But in practice, okay, if you work at, at finite order, a, a, a certain finite uh, precision, you will have to truncate these, uh, these, these uh, series of operators. And at the same time, you will also truncate the, the list of, uh, of, of counting terms. So the, the only difference is that you will have to use more uh, inputs okay, to fix the counting terms. But uh, that's just a, a, a quantitative difference. It's not a, qu a qualitative one. Okay? So I would say that there is a, never a, an, an abstraction. So the two theories are uh, normalizable and non-normalizable are behaving in the same way. The only difference is the fact that these operators being higher dimensional imply uh, a regime in which the theory becomes strongly coupled. That's the real difference, not in normalization. Okay? It's just the UV behavior of the theory. That's the physical important uh, uh, difference. Okay. Okay. So if that is clear, let me, Let me quickly uh, tell you, mention, okay, I'm not going to have a detailed discussion about this, but I, I want to mention the difference between this approach to effective field theories to the one by Wilson. Okay, the one by Wilson is, a, is, a, is different in the sense that uh, uh, the effective field theory is constructed by retaining only uh, modes um, in, the, in the effective theory, only modes with a, a certain wavelength which is uh, uh, larger than a certain value, or if you want a, a frequency of uh, oscillation which is smaller than, than a cutoff. Okay? So if you, uh, so you will have to uh, use some certain fields, okay? and these fields can be Fourier transformed, okay? And, and the, 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 the momentum of these fields okay, will have to be taken to be smaller than a certain, sorry, than a certain uh, cutoff scale, which means that uh, the, wave, the, the wavelength of these modes will be larger than one over M, where M is your cutoff scale. So this is the Wilson, Wilson's approach To effective field theories. So this means that eventually, if you do a loop calculation in uh, in this Wilsonian uh, framework, you will you will not be uh, entitled, <laughs> you will not be allowed to uh, integrate over internal momenta arbitrarily high. You will have to stop. You have to cut out your integral at the scale m. So. And this procedure basically is, uh, goes under the name of uh, in integrating out momentum shells. So in, in the usual energy cartoon, you can, uh, you can start with a, with a certain cutoff scale, let me call it lambda UV, which ha has always, in, in Wilson's approach, has always uh, some, uh, some physical meaning, okay? Uh, Wilson was uh, mainly addressing, mainly trying to describe uh, uh, statistical uh, mechanic, uh, uh, system of statistical mechanics, so multi-body multi uh, systems. And, um, and for example, this uh, scale uh, could correspond to the internal structure of molecules or atoms. So there is some intrinsic uh, physical scale, okay? And, and uh, you can imagine that your theory okay, at this scale has a certain uh, form, has a certain uh, form, okay, 
Now, this theory, however, is extremely complicated. So the idea, because it describes the, the macroscopic physics. Okay? So the idea is to integrate out uh, all the degrees of freedom with a, a wavelength shorter than a certain value uh, one over lambda, okay? And basically integrate out this momentum shell. Integrating out this momentum shell means that you really uh, remove from the effective description, which is valid below this energy, all the degrees of freedom, okay, which, uh, which have frequency larger than lambda. And this, what, what does it give you? Well, it gives you another theory, really another Lagrangian, okay, uh, which now describes physics uh, below at, at energies uh, over the lambda or below, okay. And then, of course, you, you understand that you can reiterate this procedure, okay? You can integrate another momentum shell and so on, okay? And in fact, and this gives you another, another Lagrangian and so on. In fact, what, what uh, turns out is that this procedure define, defines a renormalization group, okay? Which is nothing else than the evolution of the Lagrangians or Hamiltonians under this, uh, this, uh, this procedure of integrating out momentum shells. And clearly, what, is, what was uh, uh, very complicated to begin with, so the macroscopic uh, description, becomes uh, uh, simpler because basically you're zooming out, okay? You don't, you're not interested anymore in describing the, the macroscopic uh, dynamics, but you're only, uh, you're only focusing on the, on the uh, long wavelength modes which are light, and this description eventually will, uh, will be simpler and will capture the, the collective excitations that your system might have. So this is the, the Wilsonian approach. What is the difference? I, I told you that the difference is that the fields which Wilson want, wants to retain are only uh, fields, are degrees of freedom in practice, uh, they're fields, only describing uh, having wavelengths which are uh, larger okay, than a certain uh, call of uh, value, okay? or if you want frequencies which are, which are smaller than M, energies or frequencies which are smaller than M. So in practice, if you want to do calculations and, and, and compute loop effects, and here is the difference. Our effective field theory instead is, a, is a, in this sense, is a, is a full-fledged quantum field theory, okay? which if you want, you can use without knowledge of, uh, of the fact that it's an effective theory. It's simply a, a theory, quantum field theory, with no renormalizable, or if you want, higher dimensional operators. Okay, that's the only uh, difference with respect to uh, what you would call a normal theory, uh, a normalizable theory. For the rest, everything goes in the same way. While here, things are different, okay? So, uh, consider th this, uh, this uh, qualitative difference. And, um, and notice the fact that uh, the, the Wilsonian approach to effective field theories implies uh, corresponding uh, uh, formulation of the normalization group, okay, which is slightly different. Okay, of course, it, there is a strict correspondence to the usual normalization group, but it's slightly different. And in fact, uh, uh, the, the Wilsonian, so every, if you want, every approach to effective field theories is tightly connected with uh, a formulation of the renormalization group. And the reason is that uh, effective field theories and the renormalization group are ideas which are really uh, tightly correlated, okay? So here, uh, the, the renormalization group emerges in this way. And, uh, and, and we will see that the importance of the renormalization group, uh, the role of the renormalization group in our story uh, will emerge uh, uh, very soon, okay? Now we will do the matching and you will see exactly why you need to, to, to invoke the renormalization group. Uh, Roberto, there is a question. Please. Uh, so I have some confusion. No, sorry, suppose uh, I'm working on one formal theory. Now, suppose uh, I integrate out of one scalar field from my theory, so uh, such that I have an effective Lagrangian. And later, if I wish that in effective Lagrangian, if I add uh, same scalar theory which I have integrated out, 
can i get my can can i get back to my fundamental for formal theory sorry sorry repeat it because i unfortunately the volume was low and i i missed the the first part of your or your question uh so if i am working uh, on particular theory in mm -hmm. which uh, uh, i want to integrate a scalar field such okay. that i have now have a effective lagrangian now later if i wish let uh, i add in effective lagrangian the scalar field which i have integrated out can i get back to my, my former theory well <laughs> but you are too specific so the effective, the effective theory, I think we should postpone the answer to this question uh, uh, after we discuss the matching. But the, the, the point is that the effective field theory will, uh, in your example, will have fewer degrees of freedom you know, with respect to the full theory. So if you want to add, so suppose you are a low energy experimenter, you, you use your effective field theory to describe processes at low energy. Now, if somebody tells you, no, but look, if you, if you increase your energy enough, you will be able to access new degrees of freedom. At this point, uh, how to describe these new degrees of freedom cannot be, cannot be obtained from your effective uh, description, your effective Lagrangian. You, 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 need to, you, you need to do, you, you need to know how these uh, UBD fields behave and, and uh, propagate and, uh, and, and interact. So it's an information that you don't have in the effective field theory. Let's do the matching, okay? And then we, we come back to this question. Uh, one sec, I have another question. Please. So can I ask another question? Sir? Sure. So, so I have another question. I was thinking that energy scale as temperature of the universe. Uh, as the universe is expanding, my temperature of the universe is uh, decreasing. So. So suppose I have a fermion uh, which is mediated by which is interacting by mediated by gauge boson. Suppose now if I integrated out my gauge boson, I end up with a contact interaction, which is not present in the standard model. So basically, in my theory, uh, I I will be having uh, a fermion whose free streaming length will be very small. So so my question is that. In one particular theory, if I'm thinking about standard model, I don't have four point contact interaction for fermion. But in my effective theory, when I'm integrating out uh, the supposed gauge boson, I'm ending with four point contact interaction. So is it is, is by, by choosing effective theory, uh, I'm losing information about uh, information about cosmology, like free streaming length, cosmological structure, something like that. Are you, so the question is whether you're, use, you're losing information. Well, effective field theories and cosmology are, uh, I mean, so effective field theories in the context of cosmology are slightly trickier, okay, in the sense that uh, in, in a cosmological uh, evolution, you can have a background of, uh, for example, heavy particles. Okay, so heavy particles, so you, you might be at temperatures which are well below the mass of uh, some kind of particle, a certain particle, okay? And, uh, and there, this temperature, you might want to, you might be, you might think that you, you can use an effective theory. However, okay, th this can be, uh, usually the answer is yes, you can, but uh, there, are, there are caveats because, for example, there might be uh, an abundance of, uh, of heavy particles due to the fact that these heavy particles, for example, are, are, are stable or, lo or long-lived, okay? So uh, this is due to the fact that uh, uh, there is a history co of cosmological evolution, okay? And, and you, you went through uh, phases of, of the, universe in, in the universe in which the temperature was uh, possibly high enough to excite these states. Okay, so even, even though you are at low energy, and uh, you, you might still have an abundance of these heavy modes, okay? So your effective theory uh, is, slightly, is slightly trickier. And also the role of uh, uh, non, non uh, um, if you want higher dimensional uh, operators uh, can be, can be, has to be reconsidered if you want, okay? Because it's not just a matter of how, what is the energy or if you want temperature, in your processes, but you also have to uh, check the, the number densities, for example, OK, 
Okay, and uh, it, I'm saying it's not just a matter of, 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 of cross sections, but it's, a, it's also a matter of, of, of densities. Okay, and the, and the rates, which are basically the physical uh, quantities that, that, are, that are of interest, come from the product of these two things. So I think the effective field theory is, uh, can be done in a, very useful in a, in a cosmological framework, but okay, there are, there are new ingredients okay, that I'm not considering here because I'm doing everything at, uh, at zero temperature, okay, and, and I'm not uh, considering these lectures uh, any cosmological evolution. And, uh, and um, I don't know whether this answers your question, but uh, I, I think there is no problem in using effective field theories uh, with these, however, with these caveats, okay? That is not just a matter of cross sections, but it's, a, it's a also a matter of densities, okay? And these densities might be somehow changing the relative importance of effects. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay, let me go on. Okay, and uh, Roberto, I'm sorry, there is a last question. There's another question. Okay, sure. Right. In fact, it's a good moment to stop. Yeah, it's a good moment to make here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, because then uh, we will uh, we will start a new subject. I, I'm a little bit behind uh, <laughs> the schedule, but it's uh, it's good if you if you ask. Please, please, please. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Sorry for interrupting, but I have a very basic question. Uh, so, you are saying that. In the Wilsonian picture, uh, if we calculate a loop uh, integral, that integral should have a cutoff where we put our momentum shell. Is right, that right, exactly. This is what's different from our approach to EFTs. This is different, exactly, because uh, as I was saying, in our approach, you don't have to restrict the integrals uh, over, um, over virtual momenta in any way. Okay, you, you treat them, you do calculations as you, you would do for a normal theory. And then, of course, there will be divergences, okay? but these divergences you, you, you remove with constant terms, while in the Wilsonian approach, there is never a divergence. You see, <laughs> there's never a divergence simply because there is a cutoff. Okay? If you are using this uh, no, effective Lagrangian, you will never find divergences, simply because uh, the, this scale will, uh, will, will uh, automatically cut off all the integrals and, uh, and, and everything will be finite. Here instead, so you see also the, the different uh, approach to the renormalization group, because the renormalization group, a la Gelman uh, law, it's, it's one in which divergences are tightly connected with the, with the renormalization, with the, sorry, with the, with the renormalization uh, flow, okay? So the, the, the evolution of, of, uh, of quantities, of couplings in particular, is connected to divergences, while here in the Wilson approach, there is no divergence. I see, but uh, a follow-up to that, uh, maybe I'm confusing the concepts, but uh, I remember for renormalizable theories, uh, we have the cutoff independence. So if we set cutoff to go to infinity uh, in the integral, uh, this should not matter. So does this relate it to this fact that maybe for renormalizable theories, two approaches coincide, or maybe I'm just confusing two? No, so do you refer to the Wilsonian approach or to the standard one? In the standard one, standard so, the standard. Okay, so the, 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 the fact that, uh, that quantities do not depend on the cutoff, it's true for observables, okay? So the obs observables will be, of course, uh, cutoff independent. And this is true also in, the, in, in uh, non renormalizable uh, effective field theories. There is no difference. The only problem is that if you want to do predictions, okay, you will have to regularize the theory. So that, this, uh, this conclusion is, is true after the, 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 the regularization okay, and the renormalization. Okay, so you have to regularize okay, and then you re renormalize. Okay, and eventually uh, uh, you, can, you can remove the cutoff Okay, so the cutoff will be completely removed, can, can be removed, and, and its uh, effect will be, will be zero. I mean, it will be, there, there's no dependence on the cutoff anymore. There will be, however, some scale, okay, let's call it normalization scale, which is, if you want, the, the, uh, the, it's implied by the normalization procedure, okay. And, Again, as in the case of renormalizable theories, 
observables will not be dependent, will not have any dependence on this renormalization scale. Okay, but it's exactly the same thing. The only difference is the fact that you will need a larger number of content terms to cure divergences. And we will see an example okay, in, uh, in the calculation that we are going to do uh, today uh, where you need, uh, you need content terms to cure these divergences. Okay. Okay, thank you. Okay, so let me, let me switch board. And let me start discussing uh, the procedure which allows, allows us to, to uh, tune, okay, to extract, if you want, these coefficients in order to reproduce the physics of the UV theory. So this is called matching. How do we do matching? Well, there, there are different recipes. Okay, actually a couple of recipes. The first is the one, uh, if you want, is, is, the, is the one which uh, uh, is uh, imposing a, a milder, the, the mildest possible uh, requirement, namely the fact that observables, both in the UV and in the, in the effective theory, coincide, okay, have the same value. For example, you might, uh, you might match scattering amplitudes, okay, so if you have for example, scattering amplitude involving, uh, for example, a scattering of a certain number of, of particles. Well, let me write directly the, the S matrix uh, element. So you have particles outgoing with momentum Q1, Qm, okay? This is the S matrix uh, operator in, of the UV theory, okay? And then there is a particle, incoming particle P1, Pn, okay, so that has to be, so that's the matching, okay, has to be equal to the scattering amplitude in the infrared up to uh, truncation errors, because you know that this infrared uh, scattering, amp scattering uh, uh, operator is obtained through our effective uh, Lagrangian. And this effective Lagrangian, by construction, in order to be useful for, <laughs> no, uh, to, to, to make predictions, uh, is defined in terms of a finite number of, of, uh, uh, of uh, uh, higher dimensional operators. So this series of higher dimensional operators has to be truncated. The fact that you truncate, okay, introduces some error, okay, And, okay, and, uh, and this equality, okay, which I, I can call matching, holds only up to truncation errors, okay? So if you want here, you can, uh, you can keep track of the fact that this uh, effective description has a certain level of accuracy, okay? So at the next level of accuracy, there will be uh, corrections to the equality of the S matrix uh, uh, um, elements. Okay. Notice, of course, that these, these particles here in our formulation are the light particles. Okay. So they are the light degrees of freedom. So both here and here. So you cannot, uh, you cannot pretend that the infrared theory, not the effective theory, so let me call this uh, EFT. The effective theory reproduces the scattering amplitudes of, of heavy particles. That's, of course, not true. Okay. So whatever is your UV theory, your complete theory, it will be possible to describe uh, observables which have to do only with the light modes, okay? For example, scattering amplitudes. And, and these quantities are the ones that are to be reproduced by the effective field theory up to truncation errors, okay? So this is the, the mildest requirement that you might want to impose. But then there is another possibility, okay? If the, the UV theory itself is a quantum field theory, then it's, uh, then it's defined in terms of, of green functions. For example, these uh, observables, which are the scattering amplitudes, by means of, the, of, of reduction formulas can be written in terms of, uh, 
on-shell green functions. Okay, so you compute the green functions, you, you amputate them, you remove the, the singularities, and, and, and then uh, you, you put everything on shell. That's the way to compute uh, scattering amplitudes. So if the UE theory is a quantum field theory, then it's defined in terms of green functions. The green functions themselves are not observables, okay, but they are used to construct the observables. Now, there is a stronger version of matching, which is that of requiring, where one requires uh, the identity of green functions rather than uh, observables. So let, let me repeat, green functions themselves are not physical observables, okay? They are physical observables only when you go on shell, okay? And only if you take cert a certain limit. But in general, they are not observables. However, okay, however, there is a stronger version of the matching, which is that of requiring that uh, off-shell green function themselves are, are the same, okay, in, in up to, of course, truncation errors. And uh, how do you formulate this uh, stronger version of matching? Okay, so let me write here first, okay, formulation and second formulation. Well, since you, you want to have identity between uh, all, no, uh, green, all, all kind of green functions here and there in the UV and the effective theory, you can use uh, uh, the functional integral and basically state that uh, functional integral, so remember, so this requires that the UV is a quantum field theory. The functional integral in the UV theory in presence of uh, suitable sor sources, which now I'm, I'm telling you why you want to, you need to introduce, is the same, is equal to the functional integral of the effective field theory in presence of the corresponding sources. So let me write the equations and then we will uh, comment about this. Uh. So let me call eta the source, okay? And this is the functional integral as a function of the source over what? Well, over, over the, the UV degrees of freedom. Okay, so this is a functional integral over all field configurations. Of course, as you know, the functional integral is defined in the Euclidean. So let me, let me and then you have to rotate uh, to Minkowski. So let me state this equality in the, in, the Euclidean, in the Euclidean. Okay, so you will have a certain action, okay, which you use to do the, the functional integral. And, uh, and then there will be, uh, there will be a certain source, okay, for a uh, source term for uh, your degrees of freedom. And now usually you, I mean, the simplest way uh, to introduce these source terms is this, where this means really integral d for x of eta x times phi phi uv of x. Now, this is the, the simplest way, but uh, it might be possible to actually uh, introduce more complicated, uh, more complicated source, source terms, uh, but let me write it in this way, okay? And then you define the functional integral in the in effective theory in this way, okay? You will have different degrees of freedom. You will have a different Lagrangian, an action, okay? And now you will have a, a source term, which is, a, which is a basically, uh, let me write this term now in, in this way, okay? So you will have uh, not simply a field here, but a, a more complicated function of the field and of the source, okay? in order to account the fact that you might need terms which are not simply linear in the source and linear in the field, but they might involve uh, higher powers of both the field and, and, the, and the source, okay? So this F is a, is a genetic function of the, of the field and the source. And I will give you uh, an example in a, in a moment. So matching is, uh, is the following identity. So Z, uh, actually, sorry, let me call Z UV. Okay, and Z uh, infrared, okay, these two quantities, which if you want, you can define this way. So Z UV 
as a function of eta is z infrared as a function of eta plus truncation cor errors or corrections. Okay, so that the stronger stronger version of matching. Let me do an example so you understand what's going on. What is the meaning? Of course, why do I impose a, a equality of, of a generating functional, functionals? Well, because you know, the, the green functions of, of the UV theory are obtained by de deriving, uh, taking derivatives with respect to the source. And uh, if you take a sufficient number of derivatives, you, you get all the green functions of the UV theory. And the same also in the infrared theory, in the effective theory, okay? Maybe instead of infrared, I should have used a EFT, okay? But it is the same. So if the two, the two quantities really coincide, okay, every derivative of this equation will be valid, and, and this will imply the quality of all the green functions. Let me make an example, okay? And then if you want, we can, uh, you can ask questions. Let's consider, okay, Well, okay, the simplest example, example okay, is, uh, is one in which both the UV and the infrared are weakly coupled theories, okay? In the, the UV contains exactly the same field as the effective field theory, but one, okay? So there is one more field, okay, or a few more, which are describing the heavy particles. So here, in fact, maybe I should be actually I should actually be more precise because this source will be only for uh, uh, the fields, okay? The, 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 the fields in the, in the UV theory which excites, uh, which interpolate the light degrees of freedom, okay? So maybe let me, let me put here, okay, this uh, upper index. Okay, now in the simplest possible situation, this phi UV light is nothing else than phi infrared. Okay, they are the same degrees of freedom. And then, and then basically, okay, you can, uh, you can uh, put a source term here, a source term here, okay, for the same field, while this functional integral is an integral over both the light fields and also the massive ones. Okay, while here you only keep you only uh, have the, the, light, the light fields, okay? So that's one possible, uh, very simple situation. A less, a less simple situation is the one uh, in which the, the fields, the degrees of freedom, if you want, let, let me call it in this way, of the UV theory and the degrees of freedom of the infrared theory, the effective field theory are different. For example, the UV theory could be QED, QCD, sorry, Okay, and the effective field theory in the infrared is a theory of pions. Okay, so it's a chiral Lagrangian. So you see that then in this case, phi UV, okay, are quarks and gluons. Okay, while here, phi infrared are pions. So you see that this is a more complicated situation in which what you, what you have, so here it's clear. So it's a functional integral over quarks and gluons. But now what should you put here? So which kind of, of source term should you, should you have? Well, you, you are interested in green functions, okay, which can be computed also in the infrared, in the, in the effective theory. So for example, you might want to consider green functions which are used to compute scattering amplitudes for, for pions, okay? So you might want to excite a pion, but the pion is not, uh, is not, is not a, a, a degree of freedom of the UV, okay? Degrees of freedom of UV are just gluons and, and quarks. So which source term should you put? Well, you should put here a, a composite operator, okay? Which can interpolate the pion out of the vacuum. So in this case, okay, in this case, uh, in this situation, phi uv, the, the operator will be an operator, uh, so pi in, interpolated there by 
an operator which might be, for example, the, the, the current. Okay, so for example, an axial current, uh, which is a Q bar uh, gamma mu gamma five Q, that is an operator which has the right quantum numbers to excite a pion. But you can use also other operators. For example, you can use uh, a pseudo density. So you can use Q bar gamma five Q. Okay, that's another operator which can also excite uh, a pion out of the vacuum. So here you have a certain uh, arbitrariness, okay, certain freedom to choose the operator that you, you couple to the source. And uh, the important thing okay, is that these operators, whatever you, you choose, the operator that you choose has the right quantum numbers to excite the, the light mode, okay, the light state. The same thing you should do in the effective theory. Okay, so suppose you, you, you choose, a, okay, suppose here you choose a, uh, an axial current, okay? Then, then your, 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 your source, so let me switch board. Then your source will be, of course, uh, a vector, okay, will be, it has to couple to a current, so it will be a vector. Okay. So basically, I'm, I'm explaining how to do the matching for, for QCD and, uh, and chiral theory. Okay. So the, the, the UV will be uh, implying an integral over quarks and gluons, okay? And then there will be certain action, okay? Which, has, uh, which is a function of quarks and gluons. And then you will put a source term, which is nothing else than the coupling of this source, okay? Which now I call a mu times the axial current of quarks. Okay, let me write it explicitly. Q bar, gamma mu, gamma five, Q. Okay, so now in the infrared instead, what should you, what should you put? No, in the effective field theory, let me call it EFT. What, sh what should you put? Well, here you will integrate uh, over mesons. Okay, so your degrees of freedom now are, are, are the pions. So you will have an action, okay, which is a function of, of the pions. And then you will have to put, okay, you will have to put source terms, okay, which excite the pions, okay. And here again, okay, uh, uh, here at this point, you will have to have uh, a certain recipe to identify the right, the right source terms, okay. Now, in the special case of, 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 uh, this, this example, QCD and, uh, and, and, uh, and the, the chiral theory of pions, the, the, this recipe, this uh, way of, of introducing in the correct way source terms was pointed out by uh, Gasser Lutwiller, okay, some time ago. And basically the, the bottom, the bottom uh, uh, line is that you should, well, certainly, okay, you recognize that this source is coupled to a conserved current, okay? And, uh, and I don't want to make it too long, but uh, so this conserved current is a current which uh, uh, is associated with a certain global invariance. So you should couple uh, here the current, sorry, the, the source to the current which corresponds in the, in, the, in the low energy theory to the same transformation, to the same uh, symmetry transformation. So it will be now a current of, of, of pions, okay? But the point is that there will be additional terms, okay? Which will be actually even quadratic, okay? In the, in the, in the source. In fact, Gasser and Lutwiller explained that you can uh, rewrite, repackage the entire, uh, the, the sum of the initial uh, action and the source terms into an action, okay, 
which depends on, on the pions and on the source, in such a way that uh, uh, if you transform okay, under the, the chiral transformation of which this is the current in the, in the QCD Lagrangian, if you do a chiral transformation and you transform the pions, but also, also the, the, the gauge field, okay, then this effective Lagrangian is a, is a local invariant. Why this? Well, because that's exactly what happens here. Okay? So you recognize that if you, if you treat this uh, AMU as a gauge field, okay, then, and if you do a color transformation, then there is a gauge invariance that, you, you can, uh, uh, that emerges okay, uh, at the level of the UV theory, okay? simply because you are coupling to a conserved current. And here you can do the same. So basically what you have to do is to couple the source uh, by treating it as a gauge field, okay? And, uh, and then you will have all possible terms. And I leave it to you as an exercise. Think, it's a bit abstract, this discussion, but uh, it's a food for thought. There will be terms in the Carla Lagrangian which you can construct with uh, sources, with, with, so, with, so, with, with, the, with the source, uh, and they are not linear in the source. For example, you can construct uh, terms which uh, are, are uh, involving the field strength, okay, made with the source. Two field strengths, actually, okay. So there will be more terms here that you will have to identify in a certain way, okay, and I'm telling you that there is a recipe. Now, once you have these, uh, these, uh, these two objects, okay, the matching is, is done in this way. So you identify, you, you uh, set these, uh, these two quantities to be equal up to uh, truncation errors. And this allows you to compute green functions here and green functions here. Okay? And these two green functions will have to be, this, to be equal, okay? giving you uh, the same result. Now you see that this result is particularly interesting because you are, again, let's go to our energy cartoon. Okay? The matching is done uh, at a scale okay? at, at which uh, you can compute observables both here and here. And what is this scale? Well, it's, it's around, uh, it, it's a scale which is, uh, it's around uh, the scale at which uh, QCD uh, confines. Okay, for example, let me call this lambda QCD. Okay, then in the energy cartoon, there will be the mass of the pion. So this is of order one GV, okay? And this is of order 140 MeV. Okay, so here, okay, this is the domain in, in which you had to use the full theory, QCD, okay? And here you can use your EFT, which is nothing that, that chiral, chiral theory of pions, okay? And you, you do this matching, okay? at a scale which is of order uh, 1 GB. Why? Well, because this theory, it turns out that it cannot be extrapolated to energies much above lambda QCD. Otherwise, it, it, it becomes completely non-perturbative. So in these lectures, as I already mentioned, anticipated in the discussion today, I will focus, I will consider for simplicity, cases in which the matching is done at, at, at a scale at which the effective field theory is uh, weakly coupled. So in other words, I, I'm assuming for simplicity, and this is actually covering all the possible cases, uh, I'm considering the, the, the situation in which green functions can be computed in the effective field theory in a perturbative way. So one GV is already a bit borderline if you, you, want, you can lower the scale, but let's say that certainly you cannot uh, 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 postpone matching okay, above one GV because otherwise, uh, the effective field theory becomes non-perturbative. Uh, non what about QCD? So here, okay, Q, uh, the effective field theory is perturbative, okay, while QCD certainly is not, okay. However, by this, uh, by this uh, procedure, by this definition, I can, I can make a calculation of, of, uh, of green functions using QCD using a non-perturbative tool like, uh, for example, lattice, okay. And, uh, and this is exactly the procedure that, that mm, lattice people uh, follow, okay? So when they, they want to match with the fatty filter of pions, they use this procedure, which is basically due to Gasser and Lutz-Wheeler, 
Okay, so this was the first proposal. So, of course, the other situation is one in which you have you know, a much simpler uh, description in terms of a, of a UV. For example, you can have one field, okay, which is a light, okay, plus, I don't want to go too close to the border, but let's, let's do it here. So the UV could contain one field which is light, plus a field which is heavy, okay? And the, and the fatty field theory, and for example, the mass of this guy could be M, and the fatty field theory contains the same light field, okay? And of course, does not contain the heavy one. So here, everything is simple, okay? Because of course, the source will be one for the light field in the UV, and it will be the same source, okay, source term, the same also for the light field here. And you see the degrees of freedom are the same, except for the heavy ones. The case of QCD instead is more inspiring because it's much more complicated. So the, the degrees of freedom are different, okay? And, uh, and also here, uh, the, the asymptotic states in the, in the QCD theory are not the, the are not the same, okay, are, are not the ones that you use, okay, to, the, to build the Lagrange. So the source cannot be for quarks or gluons, because these are green functions that you, you, you don't, you don't, you, you cannot use, okay. You have, you have to uh, excite instead uh, operators, which are uh, SU3 color invariant, okay, and they can interpolate as entotic states. So that's the, that's the plan, okay? Now, I spent one hour discussing this, and it's really way too much, but uh, I think it's important to clarify the fact that uh, uh, there are two ways, let me summarize, there are two ways to do the matching, either require that only observables are equal, or to require that, that uh, uh, the quality holds at the level of green function, okay? Uh, this is a stronger condition, Okay, and of course, equality of, of the green functions imply equality of, uh, of, of observables. Uh, equality of green functions requires a certain level of ingenuity, okay, because you had to somehow uh, construct in the appropriate way the green functions in both theories. And now, as we are going to discuss, uh, it also involves a certain level of arbitrariness because green functions are not physical quantities, so you can, you can change them, okay, in the, in the, by a field redefinition. So this means that uh, there will be one basis, okay, in which you do this matching of, 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 of green functions, but then the, the fact theory could be changed, can be changed, okay, can be changed by a, by a field redefinition. And this field redefinition will change the, the green functions. But uh, yeah, this, of I, course, will, uh, will, will, ch will change, no? the, the, will uh, somehow uh, sort of destroy this matching between the two theories at the level of green functions. But everything, of course, is still uh, valid at the level of, of observables. We will see an example. Okay, so this hopefully uh, will be clarified. Hi, uh, I have a question. Sure. Uh, when we are doing the matching uh, at the level of the green function, uh, we are matching the, uh, the uh, the partition functions. Why do we have to couple the source to the light degrees of freedom in UV? Like in the UV, in the UV. Oh, right. Because I want to, uh, the, the matching is, is only for green functions uh, involving light modes. Okay, I cannot uh, ask no, uh, identity of green functions uh, involving heavy, heavy modes because these are not calculable, they're not green functions which I can consider in the effective theory. Okay, so the, I, the equality has to be between a quantity which I can compute in the effective theory and a quantity which, I, the same quantity which I can compute in the UV theory. So these are the only things which I can equate. equate. Okay. Like, like in the case of QCD, I should only consider currents involving up and down work and maybe strain. Yes, yes, so for example, uh -huh. in the case of two flavors, but let's do this, this, this example here, okay, which is simpler. Okay, this is much more simpler, much more simple. So you, you, in the UV theory, 
there is no need to consider green functions of this heavy field, simply because this, this heavy field cannot be excited at low energy and you cannot, uh, you, you cannot consider in the effective field theory. So the only thing you can equate here is green functions of light modes here and here. So here it's pretty simple, huh? it's pretty- Yeah, clear. right, yeah. In the case of QCD, okay, in the case of QCD, things are more complicated. Let's say that you have two flavors. So the number of flavor is two. So Q means up and down. Okay. So here you will have uh, uh, a multiplet, okay, of, of currents. In fact, there will be, there will be an SU2 left, as you know, cross SU2 right. Okay, uh, global invariance of QCD with two flavors. And now I, I was mentioning uh, sources only for the axial uh, combination of these generators. Mm -hmm. But in practice, you can in introduce, and this is what Gasser and Lute Miller do, you can introduce sources for the entire SU2 cross SU2 left, cross SU2 right. Okay, so you can have uh, six components of these, uh, of these sources, okay? So sources that couple to both the conserved currents of SU2 left and currents of SU2 right. So here you, you will have an adjoint of SU2 left and a joint of SU2 right to couple with. Okay. And these, these, uh, these currents are those that you can couple to uh, your light modes. Now, Eventually, if you only have pions, only the axial current will be, will be useful to excite pions. But in general, you can also use uh, the, ve the vector currents for other, to construct other green functions, which might be interesting. Okay, so you have at your disposal all the conserved currents of the whole SU2 cross SU2. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so. Let me, maybe let me add uh, a discussion about uh, the equations of motion because th th this will hopefully add more, uh, more uh, uh, hints, okay, to this story. Imagine are you taking person now or we wait next? Uh, Sorry? Uh, uh, no, I was wondering whether you would take a person now, but it is up here. I don't know, let's see. Maybe let me let me add the discussion. Okay, I see a, a hand. <laughs> Please go ahead, go ahead, because it's uh, these are important issues, so it's good to clarify. Do you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. So uh, in the upper blackboard, where you define the ZUV and ZIR. So in ZUV, if you do not integrate upon the um, heavy modes you will keep having those inside the action. And then you cannot equate ZUV and ZIR because in ZIR, those will not be there. Yeah, so, okay, let me, let me lower the blackboard, okay, so I can point. But the answer is that yeah. here, okay, I'm integrating over all the, all the, the degrees of freedom. The only, the only, uh, thing about, you, about which you, you have to be uh, careful is that the, the source can excite, should excite only the light modes. Okay, but the integral is done over all the modes. Okay, so for example, in the, you know, in the simple perturbative situation, the integral here is done both over the light calligraphic phi field and the capital phi, which is the heavy one. But this source is only exciting the light mode, simply because when you derive with respect to eta, you want to construct uh, green functions of the light field, not of the heavy one. But the integral should be done over both, of course, because you have to integrate out, no? you have to consider virtual exchanges of the, also of the heavy modes. So that's the difference, no? That, so what you put here, uh, uh, determines the, uh, which state can be uh, an external one in your green functions. But the integral no, tells you uh, 
that all the modes uh, uh, can be can circulate uh, virtually in, uh, in loops, for example, when you know. So now okay. I, this is actually non perturbative, so I, I'm not saying loops or not, but all the degrees of freedom are contributing virtually. Okay, only the light ones can appear as external legs. Okay, and I have another question in the ZIR. What what is the F? And in yeah. your equation among ZUV and ZIR, um, that uh, result must be independent of this F. Yeah, this F is the, the form, okay, is, is a function of the uh, infrared degrees of freedom and the source. So in the simplest situation, this F is simply phi infrared, okay, as in this example, perturbative example here. But I'm saying that there are more, more complicated situations, like, like the one of QCD, in which, uh, in which you are forced to consider more terms. Okay? So as I was saying, there is a certain uh, level of uh, arbitrariness in the choice of this function. Okay? And as I'm going now to hopefully to clarify by discussing equations of motion, you can change this function without changing the physics. For example, for example, let's forget about uh, the dependence about the source here, okay? Let's consider uh, just a function of, of a genetic function of, of, of this uh, phi. I'm telling you that uh, you can change this function uh, as you want, making sure so if you want, let me say in this, way, in this way, that different choices for F are equally good as long as uh, you, 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 you excite with eta okay, and op op different operators which have the same quantum numbers. So in the case of QCD, I'm telling you that you can choose here uh, an operator made of the degrees of freedom okay, uh, which excites a pion. Now, this operator can be either, you see, a current or a, a, a density, pseudo density. Okay, so it, you see, even the, the quantum numbers under Lorentz can, can be different. Okay, but, but the, 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 the important thing, but well, this is actually a special situation. Let's say, okay, let's forget about Lorentz. I don't want to <laughs> mess it up with Lorentz, but uh, the, the, the quantum numbers, for example, under the SU2, uh, SU2 left cross SU2 right, global symmetry, okay, will be the same. For example, even parity here, okay, will, uh, will have to be the same, same behavior of these two operators. In fact, this is a pseudo density, it's not a density. Okay, so as long as the operator is, is chosen judiciously, its detailed form is not important, and you can choose different expressions for, for the operators that you put here. The important thing is that you're exciting with the source the right asymptotic states. The form of, of these, okay, and actually uh, even the form of the, the green functions can change by field redefinitions. And, uh, and this is what I want to discuss now, okay. Okay, thank you. I don't know if I can, one last, of, if I should take it for the uh, discussion, discussion sessions. Sorry, say it again. Um, sh should I, can I make one last question? Or Sure, sure. Yeah, or yeah. I can, should take it Go for ahead. the discussion. Okay. Just quickly, why did you need to um, introduce uh, two different ways of doing the matching? Because that makes me think that in the um, uh, matching of the observables, maybe you may match something that it is not correct to match. So you, you described your EFT by this truncation of your series and you need to that series to be hypothetically convergent. And that is my idea of uh, correctness of EFT. So why now we have two ma different matching? So this is the minimum requirement, as I told you. Huh? So yeah. making sure that the observables uh, over light modes are the same. So that's certainly a required part. This is optional in a sense. 
And it's done because it's calculationally convenient, at least in all the, the situations in which you can do perturbation theory, but actually even in the case of QCD, where perturbation theory doesn't work. It's a, it's a useful uh, procedure, okay? So in other words, you can ask a bit more, okay? And make sure that dream functions uh, are equal. And this certainly automatically implies that observables will be equal. Okay, so if you can make sure that the green functions are equal, and this is exactly what you, you can do, as I now we, we work out at this point tomorrow, an explicit example of matching. Okay, so it's possible, and this is the procedure. Okay, I'm telling you how you can in practice do this. Then automatically, the real, no, the, the, the important request of, uh, of uh, equality between uh, among observables, that's automatically. So it, it's automatically implied. So in a sense, this is, a, is an extra requirement that uh, is not necessary, but you can do it and it's calculationally uh, convenient. Okay, so it's just a matter of convenience. Okay, thank you. But that's the, the, the physical, of course, this is the physical uh, necessary requirement. And by the way, this is only possible if the UV theory is an effective field theory, because if you, if you don't have functional integral at all, then it's, uh, of course, everything mm -hmm. will be different. No? So suppose you have a string theory, then at least, but at least observables will always be possible to compute. So that's the minimum, minimum part, okay, and that's optional. Okay. Okay, thank you. Roberto, you want to go ahead until the end? You have something like 15 minutes, or you will accept another question, because I have six, uh, we have the discussion, so you could go ahead. No, 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 exactly. No, I think now let me discuss these equations of motion business, okay? okay? Because it will take me 10 minutes and then, and then maybe I can uh, take more questions or discuss in the, in the session tomorrow, okay? Because right. otherwise I'm, I'm going out of time. So please be patient, okay? And uh, let me discuss about the equations of motion. This will clarify a little bit more. Thanks. So I was saying that you can equate equations of motion, uh, sorry, green functions, okay? But now I'm going to, to show you that uh, you can make field redefinitions and these field redefinitions in general will change the green functions. So in a sense, the matching of green functions is, a, is arbitrary, no? as I was just saying before is arbitrary and, and is done in a certain basis of fields, but you can change this basis, okay? And uh, why I'm saying this? Well, okay, uh, consider a situation in which your effective field theory is, uh, is involving an expansion, uh, a series of operators with increasing dimensionality, okay? So you will have in particular, a term with the uh, normalizable uh, operators. Then you will have a term with dimension five operators, dimension six, and so on. Okay. Now let me do a field redefinition. Okay, field redefinition uh, where. Okay, let me let me check whether this is the way I do it in my notes, just to make sure. Yes, exactly. Where uh, phi prime will be the new variable, okay? And delta phi prime goes like some field squared, okay? So at the leading term in, in expansion in, in powers of the fields, uh, there is no change, but there is a change at the level of uh, quadratic terms. So in other words, this is a nonlinear field redefinition. At the linear level, everything is, is the same. So how, how does my Lagrangian change? Well, it will change because I, I, will, get, uh, I will get here change. Well, let, let, me, let, me, let me compute only the, the, the change in D4, okay? So this will be DL4 over D5, okay? Plus, DL4 
So now I, I use this equality, okay, I, I compute uh, the new Lagrangian in these new variables, okay, I vary, and then I get simple formula, which is this. And this, of course, is, is equal to the L4, the phi prime, phi prime minus the mu, for let me put this the phi prime outside plus a total derivative. Okay, and now you recognize that here these are the equations of motion. Okay, and in fact, let me let me call these. E of phi prime. Okay, so these are the equations of motion built, uh, obtained that I from L4. Okay, now this delta L4, however, is a quantity which has dimension five. Okay, because you see. E of phi prime will have dimension three because you start with dimension four, you derive, and you get something of dimension three. But delta phi prime has dimension two if this is, a, for example, a scalar field. But in any case, okay, it's it's a quadratic in the fields. So this uh, this variation has at least dimension five. Okay, it will be higher order. So basically, uh, if I do this this uh, change of variables. I will get that my L varies into L plus uh, E. So if you want L of, of phi, okay, and the mu phi will be equal to L of phi prime, the mu phi prime plus E of phi prime, the phi prime, okay, plus the phi phi prime plus delta L5 of phi prime, the mu phi prime plus L6 of phi prime plus etc. Okay, let me reorganize in this way. Sorry, this is a L4. Okay. Because if you, if you vary L4, you will get a term which is uh, dimension five, okay? If you vary dimension five, as you, <laughs> you, you can understand easily, you get something, okay, which now I, I haven't written, but it, it will be, okay, higher dimensional. So it will modify L6. So you see the point. The point is that when you do a field redefinition, Okay, you you can and 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 you consider the variation of a, of a certain uh, term in the in the expansion. The variation of this term will modify the next term in the expansion. And what is the form of this uh, of this modification of this change? Uh, it's it's a quantity which is proportional to the equations of motion. So the 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 moral okay of this the very simple calculation is that you can always change the expression of the operators at a certain level, for example, dimension five, by using field, uh, sorry, uh, equations of motion obtained at the, at the, at the, at the previous level, okay, in the, in the dimension, uh, in the expansion in dimension, and so on, okay? So example, let's see an application. And, and of course, these equations of motions are, are, have nothing to do with the fact that you are computing quantities on shell, okay? Because I'm, I'm just proving that this uh, uh, modification proportional to the equations of motion is equivalent to a field redefinition. So the field redefinition is something that you can do everywhere, okay? And in any situation, even, okay, if your fields are involved in two loops, okay? There is no need for, uh, assuming that you are on shell. So everything is off shell. For example, let's consider a situation in which L4 is a, is a simple scalar field theory. 
with a real scalar, mass m square, phi square, and then there is some, some potential, lambda four, say phi to the fourth, divided by four. Okay, it's, um, there is a Z2 symmetry under which uh, phi is, uh, has some parity, okay? And then the equations of motion, so E of, of phi will be, well, it will be simply minus box plus M squared over phi minus lambda, uh, lambda four divided by three factorial phi cube, okay? So that's the form. So if I have a, 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 an operator, okay, in, in, L, in L6, okay, now, if, if I assume that phi, for example, is odd under, under a Z2, okay, there is no way to make dimension five operators, okay, simply because I require invariance under this, uh, this symmetry. So the, the only, the, the next term in the expansion will be operators with, uh, with the dimensionality equal to six. So, and, and let's consider, for example, uh, phi cube box phi, okay? or is dimension six operator. But this, of course, I can use, I can rewrite uh, by using the equations of motion because the equation of motion now tells me that uh, I can rewrite this in, this in this way. Okay, by using these equations here, I get minus m squared phi to the, to the fourth, okay, minus lambda four, well, three factorial, phi to the six. So you see that you, you have rewritten, okay, a, an operator in a different way. So if you, if, you, if you start with a list of dimension six operators, which includes both these and these, well, you discover that actually one of the two, let's say this one, can be removed, okay? Can be written in terms of terms which are already present in the, in the dimension four Lagrangian plus uh, another operator in the dimension six uh, uh, term, okay? So uh, again, uh, let me stress again. So use of equations and motions is completely equivalent uh, to a field redefinition. So it's something that you, could, you can do completely off shell in complete generality. Okay. And uh, it can, can be used to simplify uh, the list of operators because as you now understand, the, the list, so how, how do you construct the fatty Lagrangian? Well, we say you, you write all the possible uh, list of operators which have the right uh, symmetries, okay? Gauge invariant and, and with the right symmet global symmetries that you postulate to have. However, we now discovered that this list of, of, of operators is in general is redundant because there are some operators which can be removed. So you start with a, with a full list, but then eventually the, the list of, uh, of uh, linear combinations which will enter in, into observables is a, is a smaller one, okay? Uh, so how to, at this point, uh, uh, reconcile this with the, with the discussion about matching? Well, the matching can be done, for example, in a basis with all the operators, okay? Then you match and you, uh, uh, you derive the value of, of the coefficients in, in the basis where all the operators are present. But then, and, and this of course will give you a certain uh, expression for the green functions, okay? But then eventually you can use equations of motions to reduce the number of, of operators. Okay, and of course, uh, green functions will, uh, will change, off-shell green functions will change in this new basis. Okay, so the equality of green functions is not a basis independent statement. It's valid only in a, in a certain basis. Uh, but the point is that when you compute observables, the, the expression for the observables will not depend, of course, on, on, the, on the variables that you use, okay? So the equality of green functions uh, is a convenient tool. It's a convenient uh, uh, procedure, but, uh, but it's uh, in, in a sense is, a, is a, uh, underlying some redundancy, okay? Some non-physical, unphysical redundancy. Only observables eventually will be those which are involving 
the linear, the physical linear combinations of of, uh, of fields, okay, or, 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 which you can identify by using the, the equations of motion and removing the the redundant ones. I think I, I have to stop now because it's 5 p.m. and uh, and in fact it's a uh, is a I can give you an exercise, okay, just to convince yourself and uh, uh, let me give you this exercise. Let me write it here. It's a simple one, okay. So consider, of course. Uh, Everything will be more clear, but it's a so, so simple that everything will be more clear after we do the calculation, uh, perturbative calculation of matching that I will start tomorrow. But, but this, this exercise is so simple that you can do it uh, uh, with closed eyes, okay? So you have a theory which, which uh, includes, uh, well, let's, let me write it uh, entirely, okay? So there is, a, there is a, um, some gauge field Okay, so let's say this could be a U1 electromagnetism. And there is a, some um, fermion, okay, which again, it could be massive. Uh, okay, it could be a Dirac fermion, for example. And this fermion is coupled to a spin one massive mode, which is the heavy particle. So this guy is light, okay? And this guy instead is heavy and is coupled to uh, a current of fermions, okay? With some coupling, which you can call G rho, okay? So this is a heavy, heavy spin one particle. Okay, and you can, of course, you can describe its uh, kinetic term with uh, with uh, one fourth. Okay, so let, let's canonically normalize the gauge field. Okay, so the, the gauge coupling is inside the, the covariant derivative. And here you can have rho mu nu square, okay, minus m rho square divided by two rho mu square, okay. Now you might complain saying, look, Kavit, but this is not a renormalizable theory. Fine, okay, <laughs> it's itself an effective theory, but I don't care, okay? It's not renormalizable because uh, this is a massive spin one particle, but never mind, okay? So this is my UV theory. Now I want to integrate out, okay? I want to integrate out the rho, okay? Because m rho, is much heavier than M fermion. Let me call this M psi. Okay. So I integrate it out and I get an effective Lagrangian which contains only the fermion, of course. Okay. So I will get, and, and of course the gauge field. Okay. So I will have psi bar, I d slash minus M, M psi. And now you see, the three level, if you do matching at three level, then the three level exchange of rho mu, okay, will give me a four fermion operator, okay, which will be of this uh, form. Well, first of all, the exercise is, first of all, do the matching, okay, <laughs> try to extract the coefficient. So let me write this uh, as a C, C6, okay. So C6, psi bar, gamma mu, psi, squared, okay, so derive the expression for, for C6. But of course, it will be of order G rho squared divided by M rho squared, okay, very simply, because it comes from exchange at three level. Now, the exercise is the following. Use the equations of motion. Okay, here, of course, there is no simplification. Uh, you, you can do, there is only one operator, okay, at least at leading order. Of course, there will be others, okay, uh, high order, but leading order is only one. But nevertheless, try to see by using the equations of motion of, okay, of, if you want, of, of these, okay, obtained uh, using this Lagrangian, dimension four Lagrangian, 
try to rewrite this operator, and there are two ways of rewriting it, okay, in, in terms of other two different operators. Try to understand, okay, uh, what's happening, okay, at the level of green functions, because now the, this operator will change its, its appearance, it will become a different operator, and there are two possible versions, two possible operators that you can write by using the equations of motion starting from this one, and, uh, and, and, and try to understand, okay, uh, what happens at the level of green functions and, and uh, observables, which in, in, in particular are on-shell green functions, okay? And you will see that uh, in these other two formulations of, of, of uh, other two versions of the defective operator, uh, green functions on-shell will not change, but the off-shell green functions will change. Try to think, okay, and, uh, and then maybe at a certain point we can discuss and, uh, about this, okay? I think I'll stop here. Maybe I don't know if there is time for something quick. Yeah, there was a question. Thanks, uh, Roberto. Thanks a lot. So there was a question uh, by Daniele. Please, Daniele. Oh, yes, a very short question. I was just puzzled by something you wrote before. Uh, in the picture about uh, effective field theory and the QCD, uh, going from uh, uh, effective chiral effective field theory to QCD, uh, there are no high mass particles. So the high mass is the renormalization scale. I, I just lose that point. Well, uh, yeah. So this this example, I think it's interesting because it's uh, it, it's complicated. Now it's complicated in, in several. In several, uh, in several regards. So it is true that at the level of degrees of freedom that you use in the Lagrangian, there is no degree of freedom that you are integrating out in the sense that uh, the degrees of freedom in the effective theory are completely different from the degrees of freedom of the UV. It's not that you are singly uh, integrating out singly one field or one particle, because asymptotic states are not corresponding to degree, degrees of freedom. So it is true that the degrees of freedom in the UV are, are not the ones of the, the infrared, not the effective theory. So there is no integration out, okay, integrating out uh, the fields. But it's true that the effective field theory uh, that you construct is an effective field theory for pions, and that is uh, supposed to be valid at energies well below 1 GB. Okay, so if you want, I was saying that the matching is done by 1 GB, but in practice, it should be done at energies below 1 GB. Okay, and you know that at 1 GB, around 1 GB, there are many other excitations, many other hadrons uh, uh, from QCD, in particular the proton, the neutron. There is also the rho, no, the rho meson. All these states, in a sense, are integrated out. No, you can think of them as, a, as heavy, no, heavier compared to pions. So the effective field theory will not describe these states. So those are, in a sense, integrated out, despite the fact that uh, <laughs> they are not fields no, in, the, in, the, in the UV description. They are not quarks on, or gluons. OK, so thank you very much. There is a, yeah. So I think it's a rich uh, example, no, rich enough to think of all possible uh, situations and uh, <laughs> that you can uh, you can uh, you can have. Thank you. Okay, great. Um, is there any other question? <laughs> 